My name is Michelle Jenkins and I'm with Grandma Michelle's Art. Uh, the reason for this video is to just talk about some of the things about acrylic uh, pour painting that I've learned along the way. I'm not an expert, but uh, watching these videos can become overwhelming and we just don't know where to start. Everybody's got a different recipe. Uh, there's just so much to learn. So I thought I'd just start at the basics. Um, I'm not an expert in any way. I've, I've experimented and I've learned some things. I may misspeak and I um, may misunderstand some things. Please leave a comment and let, let me know um, where I've gotten it wrong. So what is fluid painting? It's the um, taking paint and throwing it on a canvas or piece of wood or glass and allowing the science of the paint to do the painting for you. It was originally called accidental painting, but uh, we are human and we like to be able to control things. So there are uh, certain things that we need to consider when we're doing pour painting in order to get the results that we want. Um, the Riley Taylor effect is what I'm going to be talking about a lot, and that is where cells are created and that is done primarily using consistency, viscosity, and density. Uh, so I want to explain a little bit about those things. Um, I'm going to come back to cells after I talk about a few other things, but basically what happens in the Riley Taylor effect is that paint with a higher density sinks and paints with a lower density rise and that changing of places on the canvas is what causes cells to develop. So um, sometimes we want cells and sometimes we don't want cells. And so knowing these things I'm about to tell you is going to help you to figure out how to control that effect. The first thing I, um, that I wish I would have known when I was watching the videos is what is pigment? pigment is the color. It's a dry powder. And while mica is a pigment, a pigment is not mica necessarily. So those terms are not interchangeable. The pigment is what carries the weight or the density. So if you think about its ground material, rocks and um, crystals, gold would weigh more than let's say copper, uh, or at least different. And so blue is going to weigh different than yellow or any other color. And so it's the pigment that is causing the Riley Taylor effect um, to occur. Um, there is a great video by Leslie Onstead in Color Art, C O L O U R A R T E, um, that tells a little bit more about pigment. And um, Golden has a pigment density chart that will give you a density for pigments. Now interestingly pigment is generally the same across brands so even though it's Golden who's published this chart you can use the same chart for any brand. The difference is going to be that every brand has a different recipe and so some have more pigments and some have less pigments and that's going to matter um, later. So uh, the other thing to think about with pigments is that a metallic is going to be a little bit different than an interference color which is like a, a shift color shift powder uh, and also a pearlescent and a transparent and opaque matters so um, those things you may want to do a little bit more research on as well and I'm just talking in generalities as I move forward. So the pigment is then um, mixed with an acrylic binder and that's what causes it to be paint. An acrylic binder um, generally should dry clear so that the pigment is king. Um, different brands have different recipes for acrylic binders, but the body of the paints are generally the same across br brands. So a heavy body acrylic binder mixed with a pigment is going to give you a heavy body paint. A soft body is going to give you a little, a little more liquid than a heavy body. And then, um, so let's say a golden heavy body paint would be the thickest and a Liquitex Basic would be a next step down, a tad bit more liquid than a heavy body paint. An Artist Flow might be a soft body paint, so it's going to have even more liquid. Uh, 
a craft paint is going to be even more liquid all the way down to an ink or a high flow paint um, that is going to be the most liquid. And this matters when we're doing our mixing um, for pores, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But the quality of the paint, I, which I touched on just a second ago, is important also because, for instance, some paints have more pigment in them than others. A craft paint, while it is cheaper, is in the long run really not cheaper, not less expensive, because it has less pigment in it, so when you put it on the canvas, and it dries, you're gonna not get the color. You're gonna wonder where your color went. And also you have to use more of it in order to get the amount of pigment. And the pigment is what causes the density change. And so if there's not enough pigment in the paint, then it's not gonna cause your cells like you want. So it's really not economical. In the long run, what I would recommend is an inexpensive heavy body paint or soft body paint, like um, some brands, in case you're wondering, would be Blick or Saks, uh, Sargent, Montmart, Artist Loft, Liquitex. Um, and most of the big box stores offer coupons. Michaels has a rewards program. You can generally always find these things on sale. Uh, Hobby Lobby, Joanne Fabrics, Jerry's Artorama, Blick, Walmart. Okay, so the pigment is added to the acrylic binder, and then we have paint. And it's a heavy body, soft body, high flow paint. And then at that point, we want to take that paint and turn it into a pour. Do I need a pouring medium? No, not necessarily. If you're using a heavy body paint and you want to just mix it with water, that's fine to do that. You'll miss some things. Um, for instance, the if you add too much water to a paint, then the pigment starts to not bind. And so you, you might get some some speckles of paint in there, I guess, or, you know, it's just not as quality. The paints aren't going to bind to each other or to the canvas as well. Also, Floetrol and glue are actually not pouring mediums. They're, they're, a lot of people use them and they work for a pour, but they're not actually pouring mediums. For me personally, when I use Floetrol or glue, I add a little bit of a real pouring medium to it. Liquitex has a pouring medium, GAC 800, which is Golden's pouring medium. Uh, DecoArt has a pouring medium. And, and, and all of these places have different recipes for their pouring mediums, so they're also different consistencies. Um, let's see. And they also all have different reactions to the paint. For instance, Floetrol and the glue water mix, because glue is a little too thick for a pouring medium, so we mix it with water. We wanna make sure we're using Elmer's Glue All, not Elmer's School Glue. Um, those tend to offer cells. I don't know if it's because maybe my theory is that they have a tad bit of oil in them. I don't know that that's true. I've not ever um, actually looked at the recipe, but that's my guess. So the viscosity of the pour mix, that's the thickness or the thinness. Uh, a lot of people call it warm honey. Well, what is warm honey? Uh, the important thing to, to know about this is it's more important to have a consistent viscosity in a piece amongst your colors than it is to always have the same viscosity amongst all pores. So, um, the reason for that is because a paint that is thicker or thinner than another will flow over top of another paint. So you end up with zigzaggies and, and freckles and things like that um, when you don't have consistency amongst the paints in a painting. Generally, the way to get a good c consistency among paints is to use the same brand of paint, use the same pouring medium. Start, um, it, it's a good way to start, especially when you're just learning um, about, ab about this viscosity thing. Um, but the thing to remember is when we're trying to get consistency amongst the paints is you want to take the, the, uh, the type of acrylic binder that has the most liquid in it. So let's say you're using a high flow acrylic binder that's just like liquid and you mix that with a pouring medium that's Floetrol. You're going to have a certain consistency. When you then 
use your next color, which would be a soft body paint, and you mix that with the same amount of Floetrol, then you have to add water because remember the soft body paint has not as much water as a high flow paint. So what you're essentially doing is you are, you're liquefying the paint after you've added the pouring medium, if that makes sense. So to get the same consistency, you're going to have to add water to the heavier body paints. Generally speaking, just to throw it out there for you, there's about a two drop difference between a, saw, a, a high flow and a fluid paint. There's about four drops between a fluid and a soft body paint. There's about a um, teaspoon difference, teaspoon of water difference between a soft body and a heavy body paint. And when we're adding water to our mixes, we want to, uh, I always, I do a mix of 90% water with 10% of a pouring medium. And that could be Floetrol, it could be Liquitex. Um, and I add only a few drops at a time because what happens is the paint needs to expand and contract and it can only expand and contract a certain amount. So don't add the whole teaspoon of water when you're thinning down your paints. Um, also another thing to consider is, just lost my train of thought. Right, also the other thing to consider is different pigments. Um, require more water than other pigments. For instance, I notice that yellow consistently needs more water. Uh, even if I'm using the exact same brand and the exact same formula for uh, my mix, um, my exact same formula, my pouring medium, everything's the same, yellow oftentimes requires a little bit more water to get it to the same consistency. Um, okay. So density would be the next thing that we want to talk about. And density we talked about briefly a minute ago. Density is where the heavier pigments fall and the lighter pigments rise. Um, so they change places on the painting. So when we're layering our paints, we um, want to make sure that, for instance, on a flip cup, we would put the higher density paint on the bottom of the cup so that when we flip it over, the higher density paint is on top. We want to make sure that our paint is not too thick or too thin when we put it on the canvas. If we make our paint too thick, then it doesn't allow for the lower density paints to rise. Uh, we want to stretch or tilt the canvas and that will allow cells to develop um, once we thin the top layer, then the, the bottom layer can come up. We want to pop air bubbles. When we pop the air bubbles, not only does it allow our canvas to, um, to dry evenly, but also it, it gets rid of a little bit of paint at, on the top. And so the paints underneath can rise. Another way to create cells is with silicone or oil. And uh, silicone, dimethicone, uh, rain -X, things like that. And what happens is it causes the paints to separate. We have to be uh, aware of when we're using silicone and dimethicone and things like that is it causes the paint to resist um, attachment. So if when you're using those, you want to make sure that you use a base coat on your canvas that does not have silicone in it. Because otherwise, if your oil touches the canvas first, it, you might get bald spots on your canvas. Um, and for instance, if you're doing a swipe, you wanna use your colors on the canvas. You don't need a base coat, just put your colors on the canvas and then the silicone or dimethicone in your swipe color, which will lay on top of your other colors. Silicone is not necessary to develop cells if you're using the Riley Taylor method of density uh, layering, densi density layering. And just another thought on that, it'd be an interesting experiment, experiment, right, to put a low density paint on top of a high density paint and see what happens. It's just going to sit there pretty and then switch it. Put the high density paint on top of the low density paint and you can just watch the magic happen. So 
sometimes, you know, some videos say I made it a little thicker or I made it a little thinner. So what are some reasons for that? A Dutch pour, you might want that to be a little thinner. And the reason beca is because in a Dutch pour, the whole purpose is to put your your paint on top of your a flood color, let's say. So you want white on top of your colors because you're going to then blow it off. So you might want it to be a little thicker, a little thinner um, in that case. Um, but you still, in my opinion, would want consistency amongst the paints. But people have different results with different things and there's just no hard and fast rules. Um, so, also Gina DeLuca put out a video recently about consistencies that is really helpful and it talks about um, creating cells at one end of the spectrum versus stability at the other end of the spectrum. And um, I think it was, it was very helpful. I encourage you to go watch it. So uh, again, the reason I'm putting this video out is so that, um, because I know that when I was watching videos and I crossed over to actually wanting to do it. It was really overwhelming. We have to consider the pigment. We have to consider the acrylic binder. We have to consider the pouring medium and the type of pour that we're doing. And it's no wonder that we're all confused. So having a handle on all of that, understanding why we're adding water and how much water to add helps us to understand um, how to create cells when we want them and how to limit them when we don't. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Um, check out some videos in some of the other um, groups, Facebook groups also, for Gina DeLuca, for Olga Osby, Smart Art Materials. Thanks for watching this video. And again, I am Michelle with Grandma Michelle's Art. Take care.